In last week's episode, we were off our game. We had some slips and falls, and we also had some sets of rapids that we didn't run the most perfect lines on. Once again, it was a complete grind with lots of liftovers and portages, but we pushed hard to get to the very last waterfall on the Catawagamy River. Now, we have some new challenges on the horizon. Welcome to this week's episode. day 11 and we are currently camped next to what we believe to be the last waterfall on the Katawagami. As you can hear it's nice and loud, beautiful white noise for sleeping last night. I don't think we got too much rain overnight which we thought we might have. Looks like we kind of have some bluey gray skies today. It'll be interesting to see what gets thrown at us. Mosquitoes are bad this morning. We're just making some breakfast and we're going to hit the river soon. I think we've got a couple uh, sets of rapids that we can see ahead. We're expecting this river to really start mellowing out and uh, should just be kind of what we're hoping to be a lazy paddle to the Kesagami, which is as the crow flies about 35, 40 kilometers from here. So we'll see if we can crush that out today. Morning. We are having our classic steel cut oats with shredded coconut, fig, and walnuts. It's become quite the staple out here. With one of these bites, you want to make sure you get a little bit of the coconut in there. With the bottom half of your spoon, you fill that with a walnut. And then on the other side, you lightly graze a fig, pick it up. In one motion, put it in your mouth. And it is good, I'll tell you. That's a good, that's a good scoop. Good morning. That's what it feels like. Alright, so we are just packing up camp right now and this is kind of a, a transition for us going from the fresh water of the Catawagamy 
uh, to eventually getting into uh, the salt water of James Bay. And so in preparation for that, we are going to be dumping all the food, well, transferring all the food out of our bear barrel into another dry bag that we brought uh, so that we can use the bear barrel for fresh water. Um, I think we're still going to be in fresh water for a while yet, but uh, from our understanding, the river gets a little bit mucky from here, and so we'd rather grab water from like the clean source at the last waterfall here um, before things get too gross. So right now we're just uh, going through the bear barrel to see what we can transfer into different bags. We'll keep this in a day bag. <laughs> That's our last ration of whiskey. The best kind of Wonder Bread. French's Wonder Bread. <laughs> oh, man, move those socks. <laughs> or I can move them. <laughs> Flick them off. If you're ever curious about having a lentil meal, straight up only lentil meal, my one advice would be to divert from that plan and think of something else to eat. Uh, basically, what we've done is we've organized all of our uh, our food inventory. We have our snacks, our dinners, our breakfasts, and our lunch. Um, now what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be putting them and isolating them in their own bag. So once it goes into this green dry bag over here, uh, it's going to be smooth sailing, just pulling something, pulling out the correct bag uh, when it's time to eat that specific meal. I'm gonna put in our dinners first. Here's our breakfast, our lunch, and Alex's most important meal of the day is the spices. A big spice and sauce guy Alex is. So that's gonna be right at the top because it doesn't matter what time of the day it is. He Sometimes needs. I even like to spice up my water. Yeah. Now we're, wow. uh, we're good to go. We're salt water ready. Now we just gotta fill the barrel. Now we just have to fill the barrel. Shoddy not carrying it. <laughs> yeah, shoddy not carrying it. Oh my gosh, I don't know if you guys can see how many bugs are in here right now. <laughs> They're everywhere. Alright, so we're just uh, washing out the bear barrel right now before we fill it with water. And uh, the other thing that we did bring with us, because we don't want to fill the bear barrel too much because it'll be too heavy, so we're only going to fill it about halfway. And then uh, we also brought one of these collapsible uh, water jug things um, that uh, we think we can use to kind of supplement a little bit and add a little bit of water in something else so it's not all the weight in the bare barrel. Well, I guess it's not going to be that much different than what we're going to be doing for next week. Yeah. That's, look, that's looking pretty clean. Squeaky clean. Is that 16 liters already? I'll say 15. I kind of half assed it on one of them. Okay. Yeah, that's probably good, man, if it's if it's that heavy. It's okay like this? Yeah, I think so. That was just like bonus, right? Yeah. It's just for fun. So we have 30 liters in the bear barrel. We probably have another like 10 in there. Yeah, maybe. We have some water. Nice, juicy, fresh water. Juicy, fresh water. I'm excited. Speaking of water, I guess we gotta get out on it, eh? I think, today has that I, think, I think it's that time, baby. It's that, it's that time. Let's do it. Where am I going? Like, should I go straight this way? Uh, yeah, and then you have to hard right. After passing what we believed to be the final waterfall, we figured we were in the clear for portages. 
Unfortunately, the river had other plans for us. So it looks like there's still some sets of rapids that we have to portage around right now. With the uh, bare barrel and the extra added weight, it's been tough. Yo, this is moose territory again. All right, so we were hoping that the portaging was done for us, but looks like there's a couple more sets that were just a, a little sketchier than we thought when we were actually uh, fully loaded with water in the bear barrel. So we're just lifting around them. Uh, we think we're actually heavier now, even with all the food that we've eaten, than we were at the uh, beginning of the trip, so. Oh man, the bugs are bad right now. So we're just lifting over last couple sets here, taking it safe, and then uh, we should be hitting flat water soon. Kind of looks like we've got flat water ahead here. Oh. All right, so we're starting to say goodbye to our rocky shorelines. And it looks like we're getting into some more marshy, kind of sandy areas now, which is likely what we're going to end up seeing all the way out from here until uh, actually probably Moosonee, to be honest. It'll probably be like this all along the coast. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, kind of cool to be entering the next chapter of our trip. Yo, it feels nice to paddle, man. It does feel really nice, eh? Yeah. I feel like we're on a canoe trip again. <laughs> Not a liftover trip? No. I find it very hard to categorize the last eight days as being on a canoe trip. <laughs> yeah. You want to go on the far side of the island? I was literally just about to suggest that. We continued downriver, and after coming around a bend, we noticed something standing tall along the shoreline. We were careful to be quiet on our approach so that we could get closer to the moose. Another special moment for us on the river. Sick was that? Yo, dude, that was sick. It was like a full 10 minutes. Yeah. I was just trying. That dude, was that so was cool. Sick. That looked like a, almost like an adolescent, eh? Yeah, it, like it was a male, but like. It looked like young. Yeah, it did. Dude, that was sick. Oh. Dude, that was awesome. so close to it. Yeah, we got very close. Good job on the paddling there. Yeah, thank you. Man, I knew we were going to see some sort of wildlife out here today. Yeah. That's crazy, man. That was awesome. Yeah. That was pretty special. Thanks, buddy. Alright, so our new fishing theory is that now that we're beyond the final feature that fish might not have been able to swim up against, they're all going to be waiting for us down at the bottom of this flat water section. That was just the first cast, so we can't really judge it off that yet. I think there's going to be a couple monsters in here. 
one pike. What'd you guys catch? You guys must have been hammering fish. Yeah, we caught one pike. <laughs> oh, how big was it? <laughs> it's a beast. It was like six inches. How big was it? Hold out your hands. Oh, like like this big? No, 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 like just your hand. <laughs> All right, so the mosquitoes seem to be pretty bad right now, so we've decided to just have lunch on the go. So we're just having half a log of meat and a chocolate bar so we can just keep pushing distance. We're feeling pretty alive right now. I'm kind of doing a bite of meat, bite of Snickers. Ew, bro. Are you kidding? <laughs> no. <laughs> You've never heard sweet with meat? <laughs> I think it might be a new Doritos flavor soon. Sweet chili meat. <laughs> Yo, the salty sweet combo is actually pretty good. This river has been really peaceful ever since the rapids stopped. Ooh. The river's getting shallow. Play a class one clip. Definitely one of those times you need to remind yourself that at some point tonight I will be warm and dry in my tent. Oh my god, I'm thinking about this poor canoe just getting absolutely demoed. All right, so we found this kind of rocky island that we decided to pull over at, take advantage of uh, potentially one more rocky campsite before the swamps start. The temperature has definitely dropped out here and the river is boulder, like just like really shallow. So we're gonna pull over and get the tent set up while it's not raining and uh, then get some soup on or something to warm our souls yeah, yeah. with a campfire. Down. After all of the rocky campsites, this is a bit of a change of pace for us. <laughs> At least it looks nice in here. Yeah, sheltered from the uh, the wind and the rain. Yeah. So we have finally got our little base camp set up here in the thick of the woods. Nice little mossy tent pad over there. It's actually gonna be like pretty soft with Eric. Got a nice sill tarp set up here. Oh, looks like my water's boiled under there. We have lots of fuel, so we are uh, potentially going to uh, use that while it's raining. But we actually also have a fire that's probably good enough to cook on as well. It's just uh, we're using that kind of for heat right now because it actually got a little cool out here today. So we've run into a bit of a roadblock. I would say the most essential gear that I bought and brought 
on this entire trip are these dry pants. I've basically worn them all day and they've kept me nice and warm. The one day it's really cold and rainy, I lean on these the most. It just so happens the one day that it's cold and rainy, I get a massive burn in my aqua pants right before we're about to paddle potentially James Bay in the next 48 hours. So as you guys might be assuming right now, I'm not in the best mood. I'm kind of tripping out. <laughs> But luckily, I realized that I have a repair kit in my sleeping pad. And we figured that this, if it's good enough to hold air, it's probably good enough to keep out water. We're thinking that. So I'm gonna spend the next couple of hours trying to repair this. And uh, I'm sure you'll get an update tomorrow. If I'm wet, didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> we'll soon find out. When it's a cold and rainy day out there, nothing warms the soul better than a cup of hot chocolate. Cheers. And it's, yo, it actually tastes like we got the ratios right yeah, this time. Yeah, perfect ratios. Last time we made them a little too watery, but we brought 10 servings of hot chocolate so that we could each have one five times. And I think we even have maybe one or two left each, which is awesome. We're also gonna have a cup of soup right now and then make our actual dinner, but just all stuff to warm our soul before we go to bed. Eric also finished his patch job tonight. It's looking pretty... Patchy. Pretty patchy. <laughs> it's actually looking pretty legit though. I think that's gonna keep the water out. Should be good. Fingers crossed. We'll find out tomorrow. I think we got some more rain on our way. All right, so we just finished up our beef and noodle dinner just in the nick of time. The rain is seeming to be coming back right now. We're just, uh, just finishing up the dishes here. Gonna pour a bunch of uh, water on that fire to make sure that uh, it's completely out, that none of the roots are on fire. And uh, then we're gonna head to bed. So with that being said, Good night. Our focus had been shifting as we entered the next section of this trip. All of our excitement and fear had been primarily based on making it through the heavy whitewater section on the Catawagamie River, but now we were focused on the coast. Here, our biggest concerns included the reduced paddling schedule caused by weather and the tides, but also the small chance of crossing paths with a polar bear along the coast. Based on our research, it was unlikely that we would see one where we were, but it was still possible. Most groups traveling in the Hudson's Bay lowlands would be carrying a gun. Unfortunately, we weren't licensed to carry one. All right, so last night we noticed that the water around our site was still looking pretty good. Uh, it wasn't silty or anything. You can see here. Uh, so we decided to use what was in our jug to actually put the fire out last night just because uh, we had it on uh, a lot of like trees and roots and stuff, so just wanted to make sure that we don't start any root fires or anything, just to be safe. So filled up with some more fresh water and we are uh, just gonna make some breakfast and get on the river. Good morning. This is the morning of day 12 and it poured rain on us last night. I don't think we're gonna have a fire this morning. We just wanna basically boil some water, probably use the stove, and uh, get on the river as quickly as possible. We still have somewhere between 35 and 40 kilometers to get to uh, the mouth of the Harrikanaw, where it meets James Bay. And then uh, we hope to be lined up nicely so that tomorrow 
we can catch our first high tide to paddle across, which is around 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So even if we don't make it to the mouth today, we still have the morning to kind of paddle that last stretch, but we will be dealing with tides, so it'll be interesting to see how that affects the river as well. It should be pretty chill. Man, that sweetened coconut really like rounds us out. Yeah. I hope there's another boost today. Yeah, it would be sweet. There's another very wildlifey day. Yeah. Dude, I think it's crazy how sheltered we are because it's pouring out there. Look, so you can see the wind blowing the rain. Oh, yeah, you can, eh? So I'm sure you're all wondering how um, the patch went. And I'm gonna have to say, thus far, we're at 100% dryness underneath. Uh, while I was brushing my teeth this morning, I went and gave it a few healthy slaps of water, and I am fully dry. It also looks really cool too. Yeah, it looks very rugged. Yeah, it looks like I, like I douche, like I do. You do things. I do things. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So we'll update you uh, throughout the day, but as of right now, my upper right thigh is confirmed dry. Hopefully it stays that way. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we got our camp all packed up, and uh, just as we're leaving, we we're just reflecting on like how uncomfortable we were when we showed up yesterday, and we were cold and wet, and we pulled up to this like non-rocky campsite, like boggy, thick forest, and how homey we made it feel. Yeah. It's like a constant reminder to like when you're out there and you're uncomfortable. It's like at some point I'm tonight I am going to be warm and dry in my tent or on site, and uh, yeah, I think that's just like a good thing to keep in mind, you know. Heavy, eh? That's what I mean. That's why yesterday I was sketching so much about like the simplest rapids. So the river has been very bony so far and we keep uh, hitting bottom. Here we were the entire trip worried about this canoe on like the big white water we'd been hitting. And really, it's the small gravelly, like gravel bars that we need to worry about. Yeah, like there's like no good way down this next section. Yeah. Had to be coming directly into our face. Yeah.
Eric's got himself stuck in the mud. Yo, oh me, me, me. Yo, this is very dangerous. Why? Yo, what the <laughs> What? My paddle. <laughs> you left it there? Why'd you leave your paddle? Dude, it was my sport, bro. <laughs> That's the wrong one, I think. So we had to come back to get Eric's paddle that he just left stuck in the sand like this. You made a mess of the river too. Look at all this sand you put in. I ruined the river. <laughs> I ruined it. All right, so we've been absolutely grinding so far today. It's a little after, oh man sliding offshore here. Don't have much of a footing right now. I'm literally just holding on to the edge of shore. We had a quick break in the rain, but we've been absolutely getting hammered with a headwind and pouring rain for the last like three hours that we've been grinding. Uh, three or four hours now. We're making some good distance, but uh, we don't want to stop for too long. Like we're getting hungry, we want to have lunch, uh, but don't want to stop too long because we'll get too cold. So. Uh, we're literally just huddled up here on shore real quick while Eric pulls out the uh, the meat and the chocolate bars so we can have another sweet with meat lunch. Then we're going to continue grinding until we make it to uh, the mouth, to James Bay, the mouth of the Harakanaw. So it's been a grind today. It's a tough day, but uh, we're happy to be paddling. That's what came out of the bag. That's what's going in your mouth. <laughs> Two Snickers? Yeah. I'm down. You got us a log of meat there as well? Oh yeah. I need my sweet with meat combo. Yeah dude, doesn't get much better than that, eh? Doesn't at all. I feel like this is about as gritty as our lunches have gotten. Literally sounds like the fishing rod, that noise, is legit playing a song. Yeah. Alright, I feel like my hands are about as cold as they've been. Yeah. Might need to start paddling. So we've hit a pivotal moment on this trip. We have officially reached the Kesagami River. We've yeah. absolutely crushed distance today to get here. We are officially off the Katagami River as of that point right across the river. Yeah, actually just over here you can see the confluence. Right here is where we join up with the Kesagami River going that way. Just we're hiding from the wind right now. It's very windy. And we're going to make some soup for the final stretch. We've been getting absolutely blasted by wind and rain oh, yeah. and uh, I'm, I, I'd be down for like a nice pick-me-up like some soup. And a chocolate bar potentially. Also a chocolate bar. But big, big moment for us. I feel like a lot of our, our mental, uh, I feel like a lot of what we focused on over the last little while has been the Katawagami River. And to be off of it is pretty crazy. It's definitely a surreal moment. Yeah. I feel accomplished. But yeah. 
feel super accomplished and proud of us. Definitely proud. We pushed hard for the last 12 days and uh, the hard work's not done yet. No, I probably the hardest thing is just around the corner. Yeah. 10 kilometers north. It's exciting. All right, so we have made ourselves a little bit of soup. Mine's spicy beef, Mr. Noodles. And uh, it's slowly warming the soul and making its way down to our frozen feet right now and our frozen hands. So that's the update. I feel like it's going to be kind of hard to fish my noodles out of here. Yeah, I'm just going to I'm trying to like eat more than I drank at the beginning. You know? Oh, that's a good idea. Oh man. If you use your finger to eat, it's actually warmer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Behind Eric, we have two different rivers. On the left of him, we have the Katawagami. And on the right, we have the Kesagami. <laughs> and now we're on the Kesagami, flowing to the Harakana. Yay. I hope to feel something in my feet and hands again one day. Sure. I can feel it. Calling in the air tonight? Hell yeah. Do 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 do. Feel it. Coming in the air tonight. Oh no. So now that we're on the Katsagami River, the river's gotten a lot wider and the winds have picked up a ton. There's a lot of white caps coming up ahead on what seems to be another straightaway. We're maybe seven kilometers from the mouth of the Harakana which also opens up into James Bay. So we're gonna see how far we can make it up along the shoreline. But if uh, this wind's just too strong to, to beat, like we've definitely taken a couple waves over the bow already. If the wind's too strong, we're gonna find somewhere to camp along this left shore and maybe finish our paddle up either later on today or early tomorrow morning. This is huge. Yeah. Look at that. After making a little distance up the Kesagami River, we noticed a cabin on the other side. After a quick evaluation, we decided we would try to cross the river to get to the other shoreline, but it was not an easy paddle. Feels good, eh? Yeah. Yo, keep the 45, keep the 45. Oh! Holy f 45 bro, more that way. When you're paddling in big waves, it's a good idea to turn the canoe nice. on a 45 degree angle so that you're riding up and over the waves and not crashing through them. It's like the freaking perfect storm of canoe trips. Yo, you want to go up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah, those are some big waves, eh? This is the first cabin that we've seen since day two. So we're coming back into civilization again. The trapper's cabin. We were kind of thinking about camping just here, but we might move on. We're just going to try to figure out what we're going to do now. Wow, that's cool. Do you think we should get out here or like in the reeds here? Yeah, this looks pretty good, eh? All right, bro. 
Home sweet home. Oh, my legs. So we found a spot to pull over at the side of the Kesagami River. We're about 5K from the mouth of the Harakanaw. We're, we're about 5K from where the Kesagami meets the Harakanaw. And uh, we're gonna, we're gonna side up here for the night, camp here for the night because uh, the waves are pretty big and it's getting kind of late and we don't really want to push it too late and not be able to find a site. So this is where it is tonight. Hopefully it looks better up top. <laughs> Stomp her down. Stomp her down, baby. How you Stomping Tom Connors over here. Oh. Look at that. Now it's a home. All right, so we pushed on a little bit further today, uh, past the trapper cabin that we found, and uh, actually already noticing some effects of the tides. When we came out of the trapper's cabin, the uh, canoe where we had brought it up was actually, we had to drag it a lot further than uh, when we had brought it up in the first place. So already noticing some tides. So we've pulled the canoe up pretty far and we're, we're on a pretty elevated surface up here. So we've already started taking a bit of a measure of where the, uh, the tide is right now. And it's about 6.30, maybe about 6.40 now. Um, and we're gonna compare that with the tide charts that we have because uh, James Bay is known for its uh, sand flats. The shore is sandy for like kilometers out. So we have to kind of time our paddles with just before high tide and just after so that we're, we're kind of utilizing the highest points of the water to be able to make as much distance as possible. So, also, I don't know if you can tell, but like the winds are absolutely howling behind me. Well, all around me, all around me. That's crazy. So that also definitely forced us off the water today. Eric's currently pulling a weather update because now that we're on the coast, it's a lot more important to know what weather we're paddling into. And uh, if we can get the help of a weather report, that uh, could definitely save us out there, you know? Oh yeah, Nothing. especially with winds like this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know how far we'd get in winds like this. Not um, very, I would, I would assume. <laughs> we were basically doing two kilometers an hour for the last little while. Yeah. Slow going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when we first pulled up here, all of these rocks were covered by about Probably about a foot, maybe a foot and a half, two feet of water. And now the water is all the way out there. So, so it's pretty obvious that the tide's gone down. Based on our uh, tidal charts, we should be hitting the ultimate uh, low tide sometime around 8.30 tonight. So we're just trying to keep an eye to get a gauge of how accurate those times are. Uh, so we can use that to kind of help us get across uh, the bay. There's about six hours between high tide and low tide and a lot of the water uh, from the research that I've done, a lot of the water moves in the middle of that time and it's kind of like a bell curve, like the amount of water. So like the first two hours might be, you know, very minimal change and then the next two hours it's like a lot of change and then the final two hours just a little bit of change again. So we can kind of use that to our advantage to like try to figure out when the best times are going to be to paddle. So. Like if we're coming into, a, if we want to be paddling at high tide, we might actually be able to paddle for two hours before high tide and potentially two hours after high tide. Though we're probably going to want to make sure that we're getting kind of close to shore so that when we do bottom out on those sand flats, we're able to kind of get ourselves to shore without too big of a portage. Otherwise you might find yourself with like a two kilometer portage where you're way offshore and you have to... You have to truck all your stuff in. If you set your tent up on the sand flats while it's uh, low tide, you might wake up with a little soaker in the middle of the night. You may be wondering what this is. Well, this is two Mr. Noodles and a chicken noodle soup in one. It's called the Backcountry Medley. So we covered a total of 39 kilometers today. 40. So, 40. <laughs> so it's a huge day for us and we're both like really tired. 
And so we were feeling a little too lazy to have a campfire. There's a storm coming in. Like we're expecting rain at some point. It hasn't hit yet. So we're, we're literally having Mr. Noodles for the second time today. And we're basically just gonna have this noodle dinner and go climb in the tent and get an early night tonight. We may even try to get up early tomorrow to try to get on the water to be able to like time the tides for an easier paddle out of the river because essentially when, when it's high tide all the river is full and when it's low tide the water is flowing back out again and so if we can time it with when it's flowing back out again we'll have an easier paddle out of the bay but if we catch it on the off time then we're going to be battling both Potentially headwinds again and uh, the tide, which wouldn't be cool. So uh, high tide is tomorrow morning. Um, so we may try to pair up with that, but I don't know. We'll we'll see see how we're feeling. If not, we might just we might just battle tomorrow. We'll see how many times we snooze. Yeah, we'll see how many times we hit the snooze button in the morning. We've been going hard. The distance, it does look like it's clearing up a little bit. But these winds tell me otherwise, I don't know. Something could strike at any minute. 